Internet est entièrement artificielle. Elle a été construite sur 7 ans dans les années 1890 pour empêcher le coup. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Far Experience where we bring you experiences from all over the world. So today we are in the beautiful city of Montreal and we are about to embark on a magical nighttime adventure on the river. So we are going to take an electric boat that promises stunning views and a unique experience of the city at night and I'm going to share because this is a family run business so I'm going to share their details too. So we are here at the old port of Montreal and that's the name of the company La Pérette Nowhere. I don't know if I pronounced it right but so I think it's winters now they must be closed so obviously whenever you just google it out whenever you want to plan uh, you know a short night uh, an hour boat ride and that's a must. Now as we have left the docks, you could have seen the city skyline and falls behind us which was illuminated against the night sky and you could clearly look at the reflections in the water and it's truly a sight to behold. The news for most of its existence is a commercial port which means the whole area here used to be commercial and industrial as well up until the 70s when the commercial activities are relocated from here down onto the other side of the bridge behind us and after that they start transforming the place renovating it so they reopened in 1992 under the name of the old port of Montreal so that is as a touristic port a big public park and we'll see many things have changed since then we have already seen a little bit on the left side on the old guard of all the pubs commercial and pubs are used to propose the denrées to be able to export or to buy on the continent so they transform it now to give them a second utilization for example the Centre of Science of Montreal directly on the right so we can already see it here right on the piers old sheds from the commercial days. Of course, they'd be used to store goods for a short time before being shipped to where we're sent into the continent. And they've all been transformed now to give them second purposes. So for example, we have Montreal's uh, Science Center Street to our right being in one of them. Également la tour blanche à droite, c'est une ancienne tour des convoyeurs. On l'utilisait pour charger et décharger la marchandise des bateaux avec des euh, bras mécaniques et un système de tapis roulant. Pendant l'époque commerciale. Alors qu'il y avait beaucoup de grains céréales qui circulaient dans le port, on entreposait tout ça dans des endroits comme le silo numéro 5, le grand bâtiment brun à l'avant droite. Attaché au silo, vous avez toujours deux tours des convoyeurs là, qui vous donnent une excellente idée du type d'aménagement qu'on avait à travers tout le port à l'époque. On se trouve right, we have this white tower. It's used to be a conveyor tower. We'll be using those with mechanical arms and conveyor belt systems to load and unload stuff into cargo ships. As we had lots of grains and cereals coming through the port, we'd be storing those in places such as silo number 5, the big brown building just ahead and to the right. And uh, attached to the silo, you still have two conveyor towers. That gives you a pretty authentic idea of the setup we had throughout the whole port back then. So as you can see, uh, they do have a guided tube in English and in French. They do have a welcome drink as well when you boat it and they have got slots from the daytime until sunset and I would highly recommend you to book the slot around sunset so you can leverage the beauty of the nature you know in, in sunlight as well as the one I am doing it the last one at the night time au sud de Montréal, ayant été réouverte par contre le canal à chaîne devant nous en 2003 pour le ba les bateaux de plaisance seulement. So Montreal's founded just around here back in 1642 because of the strong currents we have upriver that made so ships back in the days couldn't go any further up, they were forced to stop here. Eventually because of commercial reasons, mostly people want to get access to the Great Lakes, Mississippi River and so on, so they open in front of you the first locks in North America, it's the entrance to the Lachie Canal in 1825. Uh, it has five locks, so it allows you to not only go around but also back up the current. So at the end, we'll be 15 meters higher than we currently are. So we'd be just set, uh, at the same height as the top of the ground tower behind the doors. Eventually, ships keep getting too big, so we need to shut this down in 1970 and open locks that uh, 10 times the size on the south shore of Montreal. But 
The Glishing Canal here has been reopened in 2003 for pleasure boats only. Du mal bout à bout à la 20 ans et un ancien traversier qui est en fonction dans les années 50 et qui est transformé par la suite en bateau de spectacle pendant plus de 10 ans. Et il est maintenant accosté de manière permanente en tant que spot sur l'eau, bien mon verre à la délongue. So the bout à bout à used to be a ferry back in the 50s before it was transformed. Now this ride was definitely a highlight while I was in Montreal because experiencing Montreal from the water at night gives you a whole new perspective of the city. And if you are visiting or trying planning to visit Montreal, I would again highly recommend it. Generally, between 100 and 2.5 million dollars. So front, you may recognize Habitat 67. This is Machis Santis Master's Greek project where you're studying architecture at McGill back in the 50s. In years 25, the project is chosen to be built for Montreal to World Fair in 67. And we have here 354 concrete blocks, all fabricated and assembled on site. And the way so you cannot see inside your neighbor's apartment from your window or your balcony. And after the World Fair for 20 years, it becomes a cooperative, so you could rent 30 cheap apartments in there for a long time, but not the case anymore. It's all been transformed into condos, and they usually sell for in between 800,000 to 2.5 million dollars. Nous sommes à gauche, une excellente vue sur la ville également, au-dessus de la montagne, on a la croix du Mont-Royal, donc on peut les grilles ciel. Like, so, to your left, we also have a pretty nice view of the city. As we go, able to see the Mont-Royal's cross lighting up in between, in between the skyscrapers. <laughs> I don't know what's happening with my English. In between the skyscrapers, on top of the mountain, to our left. Dans la croix du Mont-Royal, c'est le point culminant en ville, c'est plus de 260 mètres de haut. Il y a moins des règles ici qui empêchent toute construction de ces véhicules de la croix, c'est de la mettre de la ville. Mais pourquoi le goût de la montagne, je suis sur le fleuve Saint-Laurent. Le Mont-Royal's Cross est le plus haut point de la ville, il est à 260 mètres de haut. Il y a aussi des règles ici qui ne prévient pas les choses qui ont été construites plus hautes que la croix. Et donc, il préserve la tête, vous êtes sur le top de la montagne et vous regardez sur le fleuve de Saint-Laurent-Saint-Laurent. Now as you can see the evening is crisp, there is mild breeze flowing and the city lights are twinkling here. Now we are on our electric boat. Also this is an eco-friendly ride and it is basically perfect in soaking in the sights while keeping the environment in mind. Also, the crew is friendly and as I told you, this is a family-run business, so please do support it. They were super friendly and super accommodating. And also, as we, it's a guided tour, they shared and they would be sharing more and more interesting facts about the river and the city. And they basically started with the history and how the city developed over time. Over seven years in the 1890s to prevent the storm current on the other side from reaching here, and it, present, it prevents the, uh, the, the storm wave from coming in so we don't get the wave inside. It also helps preventing the spring floods every year. There's not on the current, so we're going to approach the current in the current, so we're going to go in the current a little bit. I would like to be able to rest easy during this part of the trajet and avoid a lot of waves. So, also speaking of the current, we're going, going to go inside the St. Mary's current to our right. So we we'll just ask everyone to remain seated for that part of the tour. Sometimes we get the next one as well. Yes. Yeah. 
Ok, alors euh, ça c'est un courant très puissant hein, qui nous vient euh, directement des, euh, des rapides de la Chine. Hein. Ils sont passés des ponts derrière euh, le bateau et euh, ce courant-ci euh, déplace 10 millions de litres d'eau à chaque seconde. Hein. C'est approximatif. 15 km heure, c'est costaud, mais dans les rapides, le déballe à 50 km heure, avec des vagues de 2 mètres et des roches et cailloux partout. Alors, on est reconnu aujourd'hui sur tout ça noir. So, uh, as you can tell, this is a very, very strong fresh water current. This uh, current uh, is called the St. Mary's current. Uh, I, I call it the highway to the Atlantic, which is in front of us, 1000 kilometers away. That explains why here in Montreal we're in fresh water. Uh, a tide uh, doesn't reach Montreal. You have to go down 300 kilometers uh, further to uh, to notice the tide. And it's in Quebec City. And believe me, you notice it because it's very big in Quebec City. Actually, if you look at the um, the map, you'll notice the Gulf of Saint Lawrence very wide around Quebec City. The river is very narrow. So it acts like a funnel, and when uh, the tide comes in, you know, it fills that funnel, and uh, at the tip it rises uh, quite a bit, quite a lot, I should say. You know, so I think sometimes uh, the boulevard that runs along the river will gosh not play on, you know, special days like uh, Equinox, sometimes on that uh, full moon. So uh, this year, current moves 10 million liters of water each second at a speed of around 15 kilometers an hour, uh, which is <laughs> pretty fast in my book. But if we were uh, in the rapids right now, we'd be in a current of 50 kilometers an hour with uh, waves, you know, six to eight feet high, two meters, and rocks all over the place. So I'm not taking you there, that's for sure, even if it was uh, If it were a daylight, I wouldn't take you there, but we'll show you both that could, you know, if uh, you like speed, go right in the rapids to, uh, to play a little. So, uh, in uh, this uh, fresh water guy today, he, during the day, lots of them. They're fishing for walleye, some call them temporals, uh, but they also catch bass, like monkeys, you know, catfish and whatnot. But the biggest fish in the area are the sturgeon, there are many of them, and uh, they are pretty big. de Montréal, c'est un endroit où on se rend plus soin et l'emplacement pour être passé durant l'été à des prix relativement dispendieux, mais ça s'est pas plus à un endroit. La file des attentes pour entrer, c'est à peu près 3 ans. Il faut juste l'acheter. Il n'y a personne ici durant les bains, il faut faire mettre de glace qui tombe dans l'eau, donc ça va être pour les embarcations. Un peu pas moins entre vous et vous, mais vous dirigez vers le sud, soit par la voie de l'océan, ou un système d'église pour la rue de l'heure. Je 
Il a le droit de tout dimanche. On peut voir la chapelle Notre-Dame de Monsoco, qui est longtemps été la cuillère à Montréal à l'origine. Il est construit en 1668, 10, mais il est détruit par le Frère Sec, qui est en train construit au même endroit en 1771. Il faut se rentrer du tout par des Hollandais et des Écossais, mais on trouve toujours le même étage que tu fais à l'intérieur. Sur le right of the market, il y a la Notre-Dame de Monsoco's Chapel, with two CPD holders in Montreal, back when it was built in 1670. But it was destroyed by fire a century later before being rebuilt on the same spot in 1771. It was mainly frequented by Irish and Scottish people, which can still see their cultural heritage inside, giving it quite a unique look. And here's the iconic old port with its historic buildings lit up beautifully and over there that's stunning Notre Dame Basilica, one of the most photographed sites in Montreal. Now the best part about this electric blow boat is it glides silently through the water and it even allows us to truly appreciate the sound of the river and the waves. It's peaceful and serene, just the perfect way to unwind I'd say. Now an important piece of information I'd like to share with you guys is that did you actually know? That, the, that Montreal is actually an island. So the St. Lawrence River surrounds it, providing the stunning backdrop. Plus our electric boat is not only quiet, but also reduces pollution, making our ride even more enjoyable. And this is again highly recommendable. This is one of the most recommended experience I will ask you guys to go for. But mind it that you can only do it in summer. So whether you are with family or friends, the ambience is just right. You can bring snacks uh, and drinks on board. So it's perfect opportunity to relax and enjoy the company. So thank you for joining us tonight on this electric boat night ride. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification bell icon for more adventures also i request you to let me know in the comments if you have ever experienced a night ride on the water until next time keep exploring see you in our next new video bye bye